So guys, we've seen how to get data from vapor tables and there are many times in which you will need to apply rule of thumbs for subcooled liquids or subcooled solids. What does this mean? It's essentially liquid water between its boiling point and its freezing point and this is solid water which is ice between its freezing point and zero absolute. So when you have no data of this, you need to approach this with a rule of thumb, which is essentially you want to treat the compressed liquid as a saturated liquid at that given temperature. So please analyze that. We're going to, let's say, 25 Celsius water. You're going to suppose that the properties of that water are almost equal to that properties on a water which is saturated. Of course this one is one atmosphere and this will be 0, 0.0 something atmospheres. Pressures do not match but properties such as enthalpy, specific volume, entropy, etc. will match. So just take it as a rule of thumb. It, it is always the case. You're going to have small failures or errors but it's relatively small. And this is because enthalpy and entropy are functions of temperature. Pressure is not a factor, so if you can increase the pressure, decrease the pressure, and the value will be still the same. And once again, don't use pressure, guys. You may only use this only for temperature. So we have a little example here. What is the enthalpy and specific volume of liquid water at 40 Celsius at one atmosphere? So let's say you don't have vapor tables, you only have saturated liquid. And well, you will need to look for that. Approximate that liquid to that of the saturation. So from tables, you will see that at 80 Celsius, it has this right here. Well, probably 40, I don't know. 40, yeah, we, we're talking about 40 Celsius, this will be 40 Celsius. And you will have this, temperature, uh, this pressure right here. So from the vapor table you get this here and this here. And probably you know that we take water as 1000 kilograms per cubic meter as the density of standard water. You know that water at 40 Celsius will be very very near that. So you actually prove that. You got the table and you got this is, will be 1007. But compared to this is almost nothing. This 7 is about 0.7% of error. I will definitely take the chance and say this is true. And the enthalpy, that's another case. You cannot probably you do not have the sensibility to know if the enthalpy is right or not. But I'm telling you guys that this value is pretty accurate. And let's do again, okay, specific volume. Once again, it makes sense, water has constant density, or at least we can take that. And therefore, you know, a specific volume is the inverse of the density. And enthalpy, okay, 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 the difference is almost zero. And this is because, once again, enthalpy is a function of only temperature, guys, not that much into pressure. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.